For the listener, how do we empower people to really reclaim that and really stand up against big food? What's some of the stuff mm. you have there? So first of all, uh, limiting processed food is the single biz biggest intervention that I've seen yeah. in the, all these years. I talked to a lot of doctors. I interview a lot of people for the film and for my podcast. Number one thing, you got it. Number two on your radical health, eliminate processed foods. But that's hard, right? That's yeah. it's hard for people to do. They're everywhere. Uh, we'll get into that later. But I, I guess that the motivations, I do like to look into why. I've always asked why. People are like, yeah. why? People say, oh, you didn't balance calories. That's why you're over. I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Why does someone overeat? I don't care that they did overeat. We know that they overeat. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> so with the, the food system, I mean, it it's in place, right? It, it's there. You can't change it. It was built on money. It was built on profit. People didn't have evil intentions. You know, I don't believe that there's, maybe there's like, you know, 0.1% of people are actually psychopaths, yeah. right? But most people, they're just like, hey, I'm providing cheap food for people, right? And that, hey, I'm, you know, this is Monsat. I mean, we, we made this great thing called glyphosate and it helps more people grow food and get more food to people, Yeah, right? So it's, it's, it's not built on evil per se. It's built, it is built on profit and is a machine and we can't really get out of the system quickly. The best thing to do is get yourself out of the system. Mm. I, I like that people are trying to change systems. Like some of the people in the film, Nina Teichels is an example. Yeah. She wrote the Big Fat Surprise, yeah. great book. She has a nutrition coalition. You know, she's trying to go to the top yeah. in Washington, DC, trying to change policy. But that's, you know, her. Yes. You have to change your system and just get out of it. And I love it. I love making these little memes, little things online about yeah. any, like 80% of people follow the guidelines. They get sicker each year. 20% do the opposite and get healthier yeah. each year. Stuff like that. It's like people have to realize that you have to just reject these the big messaging out there and just completely really do the opposite a lot of the time. <laughs> right. It's funny. It's like, it's, it's so sad how it's so opposite. Yeah. It, it, it's not like, oh, you know, just tweak it a little. No, it's like, it's opposite. Yeah, it sounds crazy, right? Yeah. I, I, I reflect on my journey and it's very similar to what you're saying. Almost the more I rejected the mainstream ideas and ideals, not just with diet, but even just with the way that we live our lives, it seems the more I've been able to really step into reclaiming my health and, you know, building this framework for radical health that we're here talking about today. So what I'm hearing you say is, we can remain hopeful that some of these changes may come from a top-down place, but it's probably not that realistic, at least in a short-term, you know, kind of solution. So it's a really about personal responsibility. It's really about knowing that no one's coming to save you. The government isn't all of a sudden going to start subsidizing grass-fed meat. They're probably mm -hmm. going to continue to push this narrative, um, demonize meat, and kind of keep driving ultra-processed foods. So it's, it's really up to us to kind of educate ourselves and then get into the implementation of reclaiming that. What do you think, you said eliminating processed foods is a really big step for people. What do you think, why is that so difficult? And what do you think is something that they can prioritize over the processed food that will help this transition a little bit easier? Yeah, well, like you said, it's designed to make you overeat. You know, I do interview these food scientists, people that talk about bliss point and they talk about, yeah. how, you know, these fake flavorings and how it tricks your body into thinking. I, I love Mark Schatzker. He wrote a book called, uh, the Rito effect. Mm. And he talks about how we humans have wired to want vitamins, minerals, and protein, yeah. right? This, we have this innate sense of like what gives us that even without knowing what it was. Animals have this sense yeah. too. We've done tests and the other guy, Fred Provenza does these studies and they can blind animals and they will know what they need. Yeah. Right? right. So these flavors hijack that. So you think you're getting all this flavor says that I'm getting minerals and vitamins and you're not. Yeah. Right. So you, yeah, you're set up to fail. Uh, you have to, I guess, practically what I like to tell people in the highest, highest level is take your diet. Everyone likes to eat a certain foods, right? Like I'm not going to say that everyone has to eat beef, although everyone's listening probably loves a lot of beef, but you have your diet, you know, I like to eat some sauerkraut. I like to eat beef. I like to eat eggs. You know, I have these certain things. So you don't need to change that. What you need to do is look at your diet and what are the most processed things in it? Yeah. 
for some people, for me, it was just, it used to be bread. Yeah. I used to have bread and bagels, uh, like bagel sandwiches and pasta, just stuff like that. So it's like, how about you just get rid of the most processed things? Just like pick a few things and then add double the protein Yeah. instead. It's so simple because you're not telling, you, I didn't tell anyone what foods to eat. All I told was, is there's a 20% 20 percent of your diet that's not good. And yeah. you probably know that, right? People know what what they're eating that's probably not. They're like, uh, yeah, but I like tortillas. I'm like, okay, let's just put down the tortillas and add two extra eggs. Yeah. You know, like that will get people going. Yeah. I think what you're doing there as well is you're, you're focusing on a, a problem and a solution at the same time. The problem, like you said, is these foods keep you hungry. And it's very interesting to think about, right? Because we have this paradigm in our culture of being overfed, but undernourished. Like we can look at our expanding waistlines, but internally we're starving. We're literally starving for nutrition, right? We've got 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 calories going down the hatch, but our body is in this forager mode of looking for nutrition because it's not getting the nutrients. So what you're doing is let's deprioritize this a little bit. Let's double the protein. And I think what you're actually doing there is you're increasing satiety, right? We know protein is incredibly satiating. It's filling. And when you're full and you're satisfied, you're not as likely to go looking for those chips, right? You're not as likely to want or crave it because we kind of have this like protein forager built into us. Mm -hmm. All animals, even the plant-based animals, you know, those are the ones that eat for 12 hours a day because they're trying to get enough protein, right? More of our carniv carnivorous ancestors can eat just one big meal because they get that big bolus of protein. So there's something magical in what you just said, I think, about deprioritizing those hyper-refined foods that keep you hungry and putting in its place something that fills you up and keeps you satiated. Hello, friends. If you enjoyed that clip, then you can watch the entire thing by heading to this link over here, or you can find us wherever you find podcasts by searching Radical Health Radio. If there's value here, please hit that like button. Let us know in a comment what your biggest takeaway was and hit subscribe. Support the show as we support you. We'll see you soon.